Lord, you are so worthy of this. You are so worthy of our time, of our affection, of our devotion. You gave it all, Jesus. And we spend our lives in recognition of that fact. And we pour out our praise before you. offering before you, God. You alone deserve this praise. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would flood church sanctuaries and people's bedrooms people's kitchens people's backyards people's workplaces with your presence right now let us become more aware of your presence Lord fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith, right now, right now, right now. Come and have your way. Worthy is the Lord.
see exactly how I feel. I can't begin to tell you what your love has meant. I'm lost for words. Is there a way to show the passion in my heart? Can I express how truly great I think you are, my dearest friend? Lord, this is my desire.
snake oil like oil upon your feet like wine for you to drink like water from my heart I pour my love on you if praise is like perfume I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone
sacrifice for you is worth it. Sacrifice for you, God, it is worth it. Sacrifice for you, it is worth it To give and receive this love Sacrifice is worth it Sacrifice is worth it I don't want to bring you oil that didn't cost me something
take every bit more of you and less of me every drop every piece every bit more of you and less of me drop
Some of you have been collecting your oil for a long time. And there's there's a the story of the woman who poured out her oil before the Lord. Oh, I just feel so strongly about that part about it costing me yearly. from Luke 7 verse 36 it says now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him Jesus and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table and there was a woman in the city who was a sinner and when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house she brought an alabaster vial of perfume standing behind him at his feet weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping him with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with perfume. And there's another same story, (laughs) but it's found in John. Actually, I think it's two different people that anointed his feet. Because this one's about Mary, the, bro- uh, the sister of Lazarus. I love that God just surprises me in the middle of a moment. Um, this is so good. <laughs> this is in John 12. It's two different stories about two different women anointing Jesus' feet with oil. Jesus, therefore, Six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was the one of those who was reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Two different women, both in different circumstances, bringing Jesus an offering that cost them everything. And I don't know the specific details, but I know that the perfume cost both of them at least a year's wage. It might have been a bridegroom price, which could mean that it was even more than a year's wage. But I just felt super strongly about oil costing people a yearly amount of sacrifice. That your devotion to the Lord has not been in vain. It is precious to Him. feels like you might have been unseen 
or in the background or serving other people or being part of the whole. Sometimes it feels like working, putting your hand to the plow in that kind of situation. Feels like your sacrifice is not worth it. Let me pick a different phrase. That it isn't seen or recognized. something about it that you have to know that that oil it fills the room where Jesus is when you break it open and you pour it on his feet it is an unmistakable sacrifice that cannot be that cannot be taken from you, from him. It's given in confidence. And he sees it for the high price that it is. Two different stories, two different women. One that's described as a sinner and one that is described as a friend of Jesus, a best friend. both finding themselves in devotion at the feet of the Lord. And he stays for both of those sacrifices. He stays for both of those offerings of praise. So whether you feel like you're super far away from God today, or you feel like you are cheek to cheek with him, best friends, can I just tell you that your oil And then he loves it. And then he wants all of it. He wants all of it. And he loves that you brought it. He loves that you brought that to him. So whether you've been (laughs) loving him for 20 years or 20 minutes, Oil is oil. Costly praise is precious to him. So would you just pour your love out before him? This is what we were made for. We were made for communion. We were made for remembering who the Lord is and being reconciled to him because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection, the life that's on the other side of the resurrection, the glory, the relationship, the hope. When you pour your oil out, you're just stating the facts. is worth the sacrifice of your life. We love before because he first loved us. We love you, Jesus, because you first loved us. Oh, so good. <laughs> yes. Jesus 
clean up the intentions we have to love you. Oh, may our sacrifice be pure, Lord. We bring pure oil, Lord. We bring pure nard before you. We bring pure perfume, God. We don't want flakes inside of the oil. We don't want it to be a combination of something else, something else. We don't want it to be diluted, God. We want it to be pure, precious, expensive. Oh, we want our devotion to be pure and expensive. (laughs) The streets where you live, Lord, are paved with gold. What kind of gift can I bring you? If your throne is encircled by flashes of thunder, and a rainbow covers you, Lord. And it looks like ember, it looks like emerald and, and jasper, God. What am I, how, what am I supposed to bring? How do I bring something to you that's worth it? How do I bring something that's worth it? What can I bring you, Lord? I can bring you my heart. I can bring you a broken and contrite spirit. I can bring you my whole life. That is a worthy sacrifice. To the King of Kings, to the name above all names, to the Lord of Lords. My life, my life is a worthy sacrifice. My life, my life is a worthy sacrifice for you, Jesus. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Bind my wandering heart to thee. Keep me close. Keep me close, vine of my life. I will be a branch. I will be a branch on this beautiful vine. I will be a branch and I will bear fruit. And I will make you famous, Lord. I will, not my, not my accolades, not what I do, God, but, but with my life, I will make your name famous, Lord. You will get glory from my life, Lord. Not by what I do, not songs that I sing, not words that I say, God, but you will get praise. You will get praise from my life. Out in public, in the secret, on my way to doing stuff in the car, when I'm, you know, I'm helping my kids, when I'm, when I'm serving my church, when I'm loving my neighbor, like all of these different places, Lord, you will get praise. You will get praise through my life. Because you're worth it. You're worth every bit. You're worth all of it, Jesus. Take my life and let it be. Oh, a sacrifice to thee. Take my life and let it be pleasing sacrifice to thee. Take my life and let it be pleasing sacrifice to thee.
Raising sacrifice to thee Take my life, let it be Pleasing sacrifice to thee Jesus, Jesus, Jesus I only do this cause you did it for me I do this cause you did it for me Oh, I'm following your lead Good shepherd, good shepherd Teach me, teach me, teach me Teach me, teach me, teach me Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me I follow your lead Oh, I follow your lead I lay me down I lay me down I lay me down I'm not my own I'm not my own I'm not my own I'm not my own I belong to you alone I belong to you alone I belong to you alone
beavers are talking to the kids and they're, he's first talking to them about Aslan and uh, at the mention of Aslan's name there's like this awe that falls upon all of the children because they don't know him but they know something just stirs inside of them at the mention of his name The kids ask, you know, is he, is he safe? And Mr. Beaver kind of, you know, tilts his head, gives him an answer. And he's like, safe? No, he's not safe, but he's good. And I just want you to know that I feel like the Lord is saying that his goodness is the safety that you need. That there's a version of goodness that comes with sacrifice that is scary, but it's only because trust, when you don't have a relationship with someone, is a lot. But I feel the strong invitation of the Lord to come closer to him so you can get to know him for who he really is. (laughs) And when you are that close to goodness, to pure love, to holiness, it strikes wonder and awe and fear because it's such a contrast to what we can understand, but as you stay and abide with him, as you become that branch that is completely dependent upon the vine, as it says in John 15, you begin to understand that he's exactly what you've wanted the whole time, or you've craved safety in other places and you've given out sacrifices and you've you know poured out your devotion at the feet of other things and it just hasn't been able to give you what you want or even thinking oh I poured my love and affection out on the Lord but I was given this response that just isn't what I thought it was going to be can I just encourage you to ask God if that's actually who he is or if that was a counterfeit version a reflection in your own life where someone else portrayed a piece of him that was not his character, that was not his goodness. Lord, I ask that you would just remove the fear of being able to give our lives fully to you. Yeah, that you would just remove the fear that comes with full out surrender. Well, if he's not safe, I'm not showing up. I think you might need a new definition of what safety really is. Right now, Lord, in this moment, would you just show us who you really are?
I just feel as oh, it's just one more song that we can sing. <laughs> I used to sing this song literally in the middle of like public places <laughs> when I was going through really rough things or if I just didn't understand what was going on. But I feel the invitation of the Lord just to sing this song wherever you are, just to give a little bit more to Him than you did before. It's an old hymn, it's called I Surrender All. Here at the feet of Jesus. 